So President Xi Jinping uh, makes his first state visit to North Korea today in a move that took the world by surprise when it was announced just days ago. Let's uh, delve into this. Live on the line for us um, is Sean King, Senior VP at New York based Park Strategies and University of Notre Dame Liu Institute for Asia and Asian Affairs Affiliated Scholar. Sean, welcome to the program. Thanks very much. Now, uh, this is the very first visit to North Korea by President Xi Jinping, while uh, North Korea's Kim Jong un, of course, has traveled to China four times in the past uh, 15 months to confer with the uh, Chinese president. What can we expect from Mr. Xi's two days uh, in Pyongyang with the North Kim Jong un this time? Well, who really knows? And most of the substantive stuff we'll never hear about anyway. It'll probably be uh, behind closed doors strategy between the two on sanctions relief or sanctions busting. But publicly, at least, I would expect Xi to express his support for what I would call Kim Jong-un's go-slow approach, which would mean, and I, I got some of this from his op-ed in North Korea yesterday, diplomatic relations and maybe even a peace treaty first with the United States before any talk of denuclearization, and probably not then really anyway. Uh, so I think it's going to be a show of support for Kim's approach to the talk so far. Right. Um, so the op-ed was a very rare one by a Chinese leader uh, on North Korea's uh, newspaper. Since uh, China's announcement of President Xi's North Korea visit, um, we've seen a flurry of diplomacy between Seoul, Washington, and obviously uh, Beijing and Pyongyang. Now, some view Xi's two days in Pyongyang as a kickoff to a string of dialogues quite possibly leading to a third a North Korea-U.S. summit. Do you expect this, and what can we expect in the days and weeks to come? I don't know if I expect it, but it won't surprise me knowing Trump. Trump's talking about his beautiful letter he got from Kim last week, and South Korean President Moon Jae-in said in Oslo there was something very important in the letter which Trump himself has not articulated. And my fear is that based on whatever Kim and Xi discussed, that Trump, on a whim, when he's in South Korea next week after the G20, will just boot on up to uh, Panmunjom to meet Kim as Moon met Kim last year. And that would be really bad optics, because eventually we're going to need the North Korea people on our side. And again, North Koreans are told that we begged for peace uh, when we signed the armistice in 1953. So it would be portrayed to the North Korean people as Trump coming and begging to Kim. And what makes me think this could happen is just because every time uh, Trump has met Kim before, it was preceded by Kim checking in with Xi in person. So that, that's what gives me the sense this might happen. Not guaranteed, but it wouldn't surprise me if it does. Right. Uh, we do seem to be seeing a pattern here of, of Kim sending uh, Trump a letter and then Kim checking in with uh, Xi and then come, possibly uh, making a summit afterwards. Now, uh, South Korea sent off food aid to North Korea yesterday, um, just a day before Xi's North Korea visit, while the U.S. Treasury slapped sanctions on Russian firms that helped North Korea violate financial sanctions, allegedly. What are you making out of these developments uh, coming at this time? I love what Treasury did. I wish we would do more of it. Uh, specifically, I wish Trump would set loose, let loose uh, Secretary Mnuchin to suspend the correspondent bank accounts of mainland Chinese banks who we know are handling Kim's cash. Kim prefers to deal in dollars. He uses PRC banks for the most part. For them to deal in dollars, they have to have an onshore U.S. correspondent bank account. We know who these banks are. We should uh, cut off those accounts so Kim loses his access to U.S. dollars. So this was just a small pinprick today on this Russian thing. I wish we would do it more uh, with mainland China on a larger scale. As for the food aid, you know, uh, North Korea's people are hungry because decades of collectivization, deforestation, economic mismanagement, and a misprioritization of spending on the nukes and the army instead of their own people. So I get why South Koreans feel bad for their northern cousins, but uh, the real problem is the regime, not any real lack of food. Right. Um, and, and very briefly, um, uh, it seems to be that... Um, that so, uh, China and the U.S. are trying to play up their cards before their G20 um, sideline summit that they're expected to hold uh, later this later weekend and next weekend. Now, how should South Korea position itself in this entire equation, do you think? 
I think South Korea should stop making excuses for Moon, stop trying to send money to the North, and I think we make too much of the trade war. It's an annoyance to Xi, but it's not a threat to his essential existence like the North Korea issue is. If anything, I think Xi would be much more upset about Trump's welcome support for Taiwan and uh, Mike Pompeo's comments on Hong Kong than anything we're doing in the trade war. I just don't think the trade war is that as important as these other geopolitical issues. All right, Sean King, Senior VP at Park Strategies. Many thanks for sharing your insights today. We appreciate it. Thank you.